Here we go. Hi, my name is Bernie Brunel, and uh, I would like to talk to you about playing the fretless. Uh, I've been playing fretless for quite a while. In the late 60s, that's where I started playing fretless. You know, I was waiting to find a, a bass as good as uh, the, the Fender that I had in order to take the frets off. You know, nowadays you can go to uh, stores and choose a bass with a collar, fretless, no fretless, line, no lines, or whatever. At that time, there was so many things. There was no such a thing as a fretless, really. You know, so they start selling those a uh, little bit. And uh, I remember they had uh, some fenders like that. They were uh, with nothing on the neck. I should actually to be just a, a maple, not even a, a ebony or something like that. Uh, these were kind of impossible to play on tune, in tune because they had no markers whatsoever. So anyhow. Uh, so I took uh, the frets off when I found uh, another bass, you know. I think I, uh, I bought a Stingray, that's what it was, you know, that I liked the neck. So I kept the Stingray and I took my uh, precision fender and took off the frets myself and put some Bondo and all that and I did a terrible job. I still have that bass and uh, if you look at it, uh, you know, it's a disaster. So, and I had somebody putting some finish on it, some polyurethane, you know, on top of it. But uh, uh, it sounded great. I was, uh, you know, all happy. I had to add a pickups, you know. So the first time I tried to put a pickup up there, it didn't sound right. So then I put another one underneath. So it had the, like the precision pickup was a pickup here and a pickup there. And finally, I found out that the best sound was the one close to the bridge. That was the one that was making the nice growly, you know, fretless sound. So, <coughs> so this is the the thing that I did. Uh, and uh, just experiencing, I used to play, uh, I used to play, I still play uh, acoustic bass before that. So I had an advantage just, just knowing about uh, uh, how to vibrate and how to make a good sound with a fretless instrument. Uh, now I recommend uh, uh, to have uh, uh, lines, you know, just for the pitch, you know, the advantage of the fretless. You can, you know, do, you can go anywhere, go up and down, you know, the, the problem is you have to stop at the right spot. <laughs> to make the right, the right pitch. So uh, I personally recommend the lines. You, know, you can have little markers on the side, but the problem, more you go angle that way, so less the marker are making sense, because they're not really across. Right here they are. But the, then you just have to have the markers uh, on the other side in order to figure out where the, where the note is. You know, I believe the... Uh, Alain Caron does like that. He's got markers on the side, and when it goes to the highs, then he's got markers that are, you know, on the other side, just to be able, when he plays a, you know, a treble side, you know, to be able to be in tune, you know. So I just uh, go for the lines always to, you know, some people they want a thing to look better. I I rather sound better. <laughs> they look better. Anyhow. So uh, we're going to talk about making a fretless sound and all that. But the first thing that I was just talking about, it's the pitch. So, so where are you supposed to put your finger? Well, you know, we're going to do a close-up right there. You're going to see, you know, I'm trying, you know, the best place comparing to the, you know, to a marker or to a fret right there is three quarter of the finger. If you go half and half, like right smack on the middle, it's too sharp. You have to be slightly down like that. If I was to play the octave, you know, harmonic, if I want to, you see, if I want to match, I have, I have to be three quarter. If I were to do, then it's, uh, it's slightly higher, sharper, so you got to be like that. The problem is like when you play more notes, going to have to put all your fingers right so that's the hard part of playing fretless so I definitely recommend for that matter to play with the flat fingers and the finger you know parallel to the frets I mean to the markers perpendicular to the neck you know 
The problem is like most people play like they learn how to do like a guitar, you know, bending all like that. So when you have your fingers in that position, it's hard to really keep the pitch right, you know. But if you are like that, if you start playing here, it's easier, you know, to match to have your finger repeating the position position on the other strings if your fingers are parallel to the frets, you know. So it's a technique. That I usually show people is like I usually I don't have my thumb on that side, I have it uh, on the other side. I just le let my finger just go flat on the neck, you know, and then let the thumb go wherever it feels like going, which is about here, you know. So, and instead of doing that kind of movement like right here, you see, if I play, I'm not bending those fingers. I'm trying to avoid having all those angles. I just uh, turn. You see my wrist. My wrist is going down that way, in order to let my fingers to be in the right to same position all the time. Okay. So uh, for that, you know. Uh, you have to understand that if you're moving your fingers up the neck, your thumb is going to start to kind of change position slightly. Because you cannot have the, the, the thumb up there, you know, if you're up, up in the first position right there, you know, so the thumb is going to be about across this guy. If I'm playing a C major scale, you know, you see, my first finger is up there, and this one is about here. So. So in order to practice the pitch, you know, I try to practice, you know, just straight scale like modes. If you play a major scale right there, it's gonna be called like this is C Ionic, you know. So you just may as well play the mode, practice up and down. Then you know to make it a little more interesting, you can try to play you know thirds. Okay, or do four notes. So, I mean, you can play as many exercises as you want, but the idea is just, you know, just start to do one of them. You don't have to go fast. Going fast, it's not necessary at the beginning. You just have to learn muscle memory. It's like any other sport, you know, you're practicing tennis or whatever, or, you know, you just practice the thing slowly until your body gets the muscle memory. And then, when you got it, then you'll be able to do it fast and the finger will go, go down to the, at the right position and go to the right place. So, uh, talking about modes, that's where we were talking. You can do, you know, then go to Dorian and do the, you know, same thing, you know, trying to match. You notice that uh, when I play, I'm trying, instead of doing short notes, I'm trying to keep, you know, legato, notes as long as possible. I, I'm not letting them go, and I don't do this as well. It's easier to press with the pinky if you have the other guys down as well, you know. And you see when I arrive to the A right there to go to the B, I just stretch. You see, I'm holding that guy down. So 
then, you know, after the door in, you can do the frigid mode. And by the way, if you want to know what I'm talking about, if you don't know about the modes, you can, you know, have a book called The Complete Base Essentials, you know, where I teach the modes and all that, and I recommend that, you know, for everybody, you know. So anyhow, you're going to do the frigid mode, you know, E, F, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. That's E frigid, okay? So same thing, align your fingers and just try to play the thing up and down like that, you know. Okay, same thing, you can do your thirds and all that. It's just try to really keep the thing in tune. And then the four note pattern, that'll be fine, you know. Any exercise will work for that type of thing. You just try to control, okay, to control the pitch. And, you know, you can work on the, uh, the of course, Lydian from F. Okay, and then thirds, the same, same thing, you know. pattern etc etc then of course you know I'll keep going with the modes just uh, as a revision if you don't remember them too well that's the mixolydian mode G we're still in the key of C right here it's good to keep you know like that you have the, the key in your ears, so it's easier to practice. close to the first finger over there it was about here then when you move up you know it stopped being in between then on the you know Phrygian is about exactly right when you play the from the second finger it's of course there you know on the Lydian then the Mixolydian you know same thing now we go to the Aeolian you see it's a half step up down and you notice that my fingers are still in the same position that they were, you know, at the, you know, always parallel to the frets mark. And then, you know, the four note pattern. Any exercise, as I said, will work. You know, it's just a matter. Just try to get used to for the pitch. And the last one right there, the Alacrian. You see that my thumb is on the G right there. great about the fretless it's you can be you can really be more melodic you know and expressive you can really like vibrate really nicely when you have a fret the only way to vibrate most of the time you can is a way to do it down but uh, we won't get into that <laughs> it's uh, usually it's just bending the string like that, which makes the pitch go up. What's great, and what sounds great with the fretless is you can, you can go down. So the vibrato is like that instead of being. So that's the main difference. And it sounds a lot better when you play a melody to go down and back up to the right pitch than making it sharp. And in fact, if you hear a singer that sings sharp, you're gonna hear him that he sings out of tune. But if there's a lot of singer uh, that sings flat a little bit, then it sounds just fine. So the vibrato sounds better going flat and back to the pitch than going sharp. Okay? 
So the ID for that, you know, it's like you, know, you just slide slightly. Just the fact of you see moving just the finger, like uh, the finger just rocking like that, makes it vibrate. Try to uh, vibrate at the end of a phrase, not everywhere. You know, you just play. It's like having uh, the note. Uh, it sounds better when you start with the note with no effect and then add the effect. You know. You see, if I was doing, it's like a doesn't make the same effect, you know. It's uh, uh, always uh, 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 it's always important to give the listener something that makes a difference. When you if like let's say if you play fast all the time, people don't know that you're playing fast because they think that's the way it is. But uh, if you play some s nice slow phrase and suddenly you do a fast one, they're going to say, wow, that guy can play fast. Because you're giving them something to compare. All right? If it's always 1,000 notes, you know, people don't really get it. You know, it's got to have a, a balance. It's the same thing with the vibrato, vibrato. If you're vibrating all the time, it's just the way People think it's just the way it is, you know. Oh yeah, it's just vibrating all the time. But if you bring it like that, you know, starting and put it at the end, then it'll be much more expressive. That's why people like uh, uh, Jaco was, uh, you know, the god, I guess, of the fretless people. Always uh, when I think fretless bass, people think of Jaco. That was his, uh, one of his forte. He played such a nice melody and put a, with a nice vibra vibrato, and uh, uh, people really loved it. That's what the thing you like to talk to them. It's like a, a, a human voice, you know. It's really close to human voice when, when we play fretless. You know, it's much more melodic. And in fact, uh, I, you cannot be corny. You know, if I'm playing the bass. Uh, if I sing the way I just play la 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 la, is it gonna be like that? Sounds corny, but on the bass, it sounds very very beautiful. You know, it's really melodic, very nice. You know, and it's funny because I remember uh, the first time I, I, the, there was an interview about you know people were asking Jaco was his favorite musician that he listened to all the time and. Uh, they thought he was joking. He said Frank Sinatra, and uh, uh, for me it was like, oh yeah, that's you know I understand. You know, just like like a crooner, just like plays those nice melodies. And uh, uh, anyway, that's for me that was uh, make me understood uh, because I was already playing acoustic bass and fretless and all that. Uh, I was already playing. I'm actually l older than uh, uh, than Jaco was older. But uh, listening to him, that's what brought me the idea. It's just like, oh yeah, let's, s s you know, that was the melody when I heard him. I, he sounded like a crooner. For me, I says, oh, I understand. Yeah, you got to make it uh, lyric. You got to be, you know, lyricism in your playing. You know, so I think that that's what the fretless is all about. You know, it's some an instrument very lyric. So uh, something that I'm going to talk about because it's not enough, you know, talking about the the. Vibrato is the sound. How do you create that sound? So as I mentioned before, it's better to use uh, uh, the bridge close, the pickup, <laughs> sorry, the pickup. It's better to use the pickup close to the bridge. That's where you get the growl, OK? That's where you get the really that, uh, that sound. Also, you have to know where are you going to play. If you play too close to to the to the bridge there is you know mid range like 500 side but there's no bass if you go here on the other side that's where you're going to you're going to have you know 
that's where you're gonna get the 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 singing part. The thing is like here you cannot play fast because the the note have tendency to start when the vibration come later. So what do you want to do if you play fast note then you don't want to be too close to the bridge because you won't have any bass. You're trying to be you see right there where the bass comes. You see no bass and suddenly you can hear it better on the lower string. If I'm playing a bass line, you know, I'm trying to play it right here. Because I get that growling, but I still have the lows. You still, you know, it's not because you're playing fretless bass that you're not playing the bass anymore. You are still a bass player, you're gonna have to sound like a bass player, and that's where the you know the mid is right there on the low mid range, like 350 around that uh, kind of uh, frequency, and uh, uh, of course everything below that. But uh, uh, that's where it is. So if I want to play a ballad, then I'm gonna move. The string vibrates slower. So when I'm playing, that's where you know, that's where the sound. And adding that vibrato, you know. created because I'm playing higher on the neck, right? That's where the slow note and long ones happen. So remember that uh, if you are playing a bass line, you want to be about uh, one hand from the bridge. That's where you're going to strike the strings, you know. I usually myself put my thumb here and play here because uh, I'm trying to keep uh, uh, the finger the same length. If you like that, you're going to have a short one and a long one. They're not going to sound the same, really. But uh, uh, having my finger sideways make them sound the same way. Okay, so I'm trying to play right there and uh, just put my th thumb here. If I'm playing, you know, usually I'm trying. I usually like mute the E string and just get away uh, just to make it sound and you know no one can actually be ringing. Because you have a sympathetic vibration. If I'm playing an E here, if I stop it, you can hear it. You know, resonance of that note. Same thing, play an A. Then this guy, this guy is going to be resonating. Okay? So that's what you always have to try to uh, mute those guys. The advantage is like uh, uh, when I'm playing with a f my finger flat, like I have to, if I'm playing right here, if I'm playing an E, because I'm touching the other two, instead of I'm not playing like a guitar like that. On a guitar, you want all the you want all the the, the, the strings to ring, but in this case, you don't. So if I'm playing, you know, bass with a linear pattern, if I stop playing because I'm touching the strings right there. It doesn't make any sound. Okay, it mutes. So when I'm going up on the contrary, because I'm liberating. So it's the the way I strumming the string with the fingers. You know, I'm using. You see, when if I'm playing the A string, I'm touching the E. You know, and stroking down to the E, so I'm muting it. If I go to the next one, I'm muting it, I'm muting the A and the G something. So usually when I go this way, these fingers are muting the previous string I just played. And when I go that way, it's the left hand that mute. Okay? And that's gonna bring me to the technique that I'm using 
with the right hand. What am I doing? Well, you know, each time I'm playing a, st a string, I'm changing fingers. The only time I don't is when I just play the, a note and I want to play that string, so I'm playing the finger that touch. That's my favorite exercise that I give about everybody trying to correct the technique. change finger every time I play a note. The only time I don't if I'm going down strings. If I was going this way, I would use only one finger. I'm not gonna do doing that. I'm just gonna do if I'm going up, it'll go back down. Okay, it's like one. line you know you're gonna have to try to find out what you're doing with that hand you know many times you know if I'm playing like a C major as I was doing just going back without doubling any notes is I'm gonna keep the same finger in it's gonna be one two one two one two one two one two two one two one back to one one two one two one two one two one two so if the fingering stays always the same, then I try to learn the bass line I just did backwards. Start with two. I'm gonna do it slower. thing would be to double the first note every time then it'll reverse it back to the top etc etc so that's something that I recommend to try to help correcting the technique of the right hand. Uh, actually, I do have on that first book that I mentioned, The Complete Bass Essentials, that it's published by uh, Mel Bates, also has a DVD with it that where I show the exercise. I do, uh, I do have, at the beginning, a very extensive exercise just to correct the technique of the right hand. So I really recommend it. Okay. So uh, to go back to what uh, the sound and creating the sound with the fretless, uh, you know, as soon as you can, you know, after you practice all those mode and mode and get the, the right technique, try to play some uh, some bass line. Etc. Etc. Try to get something and try to put your fingers. You see, I'm doing some kind of a chromatic movement right there, and that's just playing the blues in C, just to create some kind of a groove. You know, put a, a metronome. You know, if you have a drum machine, uh, you know, just put a drum machine. I do. Uh, uh, myself, I found something that was really uh, practical. I have one of those uh, uh, little pedal. I got a Digitech pedal for the bass. PB80 or PB200, and they do have a button. You have a, like a, a drum machine, you know, doing tack, doing tack, you know. So it's good to have that, you know, something like that that you can put on and practice because timing is everything. 
It's just, uh, uh, I always, always say, you know, if you're playing something with not a good timing, it's worth nothing. It's just like, it's better to play a wrong note in time than a good note not in time. You know, and I'm not exaggerating. It's just, uh, that's the way it is, you know. People are more, you know, understanding things if they're really right on. It's just uh, making a check, you know. If you write a check, if you don't sign it, it doesn't worth anything. So it's the same thing. The signature is the timing. If you play something, just nail the timing down. It'll you really be happy. I like to mention something that I just did playing that uh, bass line in C right there. It's like when I'm in the first position, I actually use the acoustic bass type of fingering. And uh, when you play uh, the uh, contrabass, you know, we right we playing with the uh, first finger, second and fourth. You know, it's like I'm playing. You see, that's the technique we do. You know. <laughs> So when I'm in that first position, I actually then playing F major, I actually do that. If I keep going, then I go back to one finger per fret. But in the first position, I do that. So when I'm playing a bass line, I'm actually use the same type of thing. You know, instead of playing with a four, I'm using the pinky right there. Okay, so I do the same thing, you know, uh, if I, you know, play any of, uh, sometimes I start playing a bass line, then I move, and then I go back right here. So when I play that bass line, you notice that's what I did, you know. And it's easier to use that thing you know, this position in the first position, the fingering right here, it's easier right there. Okay, so uh, I definitely recommend that. And you'll see, even if, you have, even if I play bass line here, you see I go back to the four, but you know, I'm trying to keep that thing unless I wanna do something, you see. You know, but basically, uh, play one five eight I actually use that fingering you know playing with a pinky instead of the third finger all right so now we're going to look at something very important when I play fretless I really try to to have the note legato instead of playing you know which is okay you can do that as well but I mean if you want to make an effect of the fretless you're gonna to have to hold the notes I use some ghost notes like here I'm doing See, muting the one before I play the long one, so that accentuate the legato of the next one. You see? Okay, now what are we gonna do? We're gonna practice together. So get your bass, and uh, we're gonna play a bass line, you know, the fretless idea, all right? We're going to play something in A. So instead of playing, you know, right there, down, because it's going to be a slow one, I'm going to play here, you know, above, you know, just below. So I'm going to play A, E, the fifth, and A again. And I'm going to vibrate that one. D, 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 E, A, back to D, E, A, okay? So you can play that with this finger here in that position, you know, on A, you can actually use also, if, you, if it's easier for you, you can use this finger. Then we're gonna go down to G doing the same thing. So then here I'm really, it, I think it's easier to use the pinky.
So I'm going to put the rhythm with it, and uh, we'll be going. Here we go. Let's get a groove. Let's get a groove going here. All right. One, two, three, four. Back to A. And you notice that when I don't vibrate immediately, I just play the note and then vibrate, okay? See, the vibrato comes after I play the note, okay? Now, we're going to play a, a bass line. Let's do something in D. You notice, the first one I'm not vibrating. And all the notes are legato on this one. Okay, so let me turn on the bit like you can play with the with the drums right there. Okay. to see back to the
now we're gonna do one where we're gonna slide with both fingers at the stem at the same time, okay? Both fingers at the same time. You know the first one is Let's try that with the rhythm. Let's start something here. All right, a little shuffle beat. Notice that you see I finish the thing and I play a note and I vibrate it. It's nice on the basic, you know. Sliding, you know, it's just got all those things that you can do. Sometimes you do it, sometimes you don't. It. That's always sometimes you do it, sometimes you don't. So I always say, as a beginning, you know, make it different, change it. If you're playing a pattern, it's nice to make one 
one way and then the second one slightly different. You see? Played some vibrato, some no vibrato. I slide some of them. That's how uh, you can create something instead of playing the same thing all the time. What's great with the fretless, you can make it sound different every time you play it. Now we're gonna play. I'm gonna play a, a, a bass line for you. Show you something in a, like E minor type of thing. So E minor seven is gonna be the the Dorian mode, you know, so it's going to be like in D major, so but it's E minor, all right, and I'm going to do, you know, you know what I mean? So I'm starting on the A, A, B, D, E, G, that's where I vibrate back to the E, same phrase again. And then I go down E, D, B, A, and slide to the G. All right? All right, so let me turn on the, uh, the rhythm. And uh, we will be going. There we go. One, two, three. <laughs> Let's try to look at uh, different things. You notice that I really like and then vibrate after. I keep repeating that because many times people try to they try to play and they vibrate immediately and uh, just the pitch is out. You know, you gotta you gotta play it right and then then you can you know make it uh, vibrate. This is make it give give it some some meaning to your note. Okay, let's practice again. You know, we did a little bit before. Let's try to practice. With a slide with both ends, you know. Like that, okay? D to C and G to A, like that. Try to have you practicing for a little while with the drums doing that type of slide. You see that I'm vibrating both fingers. Okay, gonna put the drums and do it. Let's do it. A one, two, three, four.
go. Right, let's, uh, let me show you a, a bass line that is over like a, a over like a, a E flat seven with the sharp 11. So I'm gonna use that note and that note, of course. So it's gonna be like a Okay, I start with one, five, nine, five, the uh, sharp 11. Go, you know, C, G. Kind of a pentatonic right here. sliding you know to good sliding to go back to the root okay exercise for you to try to slide and stop at the right spot. All right? You see, you notice that when I play the ninth, you know, that's where I'm vibrating. When I play the G right there, I'm vibrating. Let's put the drums, just try to have fun. Here we go. So uh, I understand, I realize this is a little complex, but uh, it's really important to try to practice something that's going to teach you where to stop and to vibrate. And uh, that's why I definitely recommend lines. You know, if you're playing something, you know, without lines, you know, I mean, the pitch is going to be really something. It's always okay to play little simple lines, you know, to play simple bass line. But if you, th if you st start going from up and down the neck, without markers and line, you know, you're going to be totally all over the place and the pitch is not going to be that good. So I uh, say that again, it maybe looks better without it, but it's, you're playing music and it's more important to sound better <laughs> at that point, okay, playing the fretless. So uh, practice and uh, uh, just try that, as I say, to, you know, to stop, you know, to practice trying to, and you will note also that, you know, as I told you that you have to be three quarter, you know, you know, but uh, I noticed that if you try to tap something, it uh, looks uh, that you have to be the other way around for some reason when I'm tapping. 
for the note to be right, it's not three quarter. If I'm tapping a note, and if I'm adding, you know, you see if I put it uh, below, it doesn't work. I have to be right on it when I tap in order to make it sound right. I don't know what it is, but that's what it is. Okay? So uh, if you try to do these things, the adding tapping, you will notice that the technique of putting three quarter for tapping it doesn't work work quite right. You know, you got to be right on the middle of your finger when you tap. Okay, it's probably the way that it propagates the sound that does that. Well, you know, this is a couple of exercises, and uh, you can uh, check some more exercises on the book that I wrote. Uh, with uh, Shoskan Depre, fretless book, uh, fretless bass. Uh, it's released by Hal Leonard. And uh, you can actually find those on my website, uh, bunnybrunel.com, and uh, as well as uh, other books and uh, my latest CDs and other DVDs, whatever. So, but uh, anyhow, I would like to uh, mention, you know, that uh, at the beginning I was talking about uh, fretless basses. I took off the fret of my uh, Fender bass when I could find another bass that had a nice neck, you know, put some bondo and some finish and all that. But what's good about now, you know, it's just like you can go in stores and choose uh, an instrument and the color you want, fretted, fretless, mm -hmm. uh, you know, markers, no markers, no dot. You can really order things, you know, and which is great. You know, at the time, me in the 60s, there was nothing. There was no fretless to buy, you know. It was just you had to take a base and take off the frets and things like that. This is uh, actually my model. This is the, the Bunny Brunel. You have a, a bunch of them right here. This is the model that they're made by Carvin. This is I design, you know, this particular instrument. And, uh, uh, you know, if you order it, whatever, you'll have exactly the same as mine. Mine has a, a, a fretless with uh, lines, and I have actually have a special finish that they call hard as nail. You know, this thing is great because you can... <laughs> slap, you know, on a fretless, and there is actually no marks happening. So you, when they put that finish, you never have to do it again, so I really love it. So check that at carving.com, in kind of the Bunny Brunel, it's the BB model, you know. So that's what I use, and every, every elf design, the pickups, everything, you know, in there. So they, they sound very good. And you can order it uh, with the, all the color you want. I have a special one right here that you cannot have that one. This is the, my daughter's feet. So. <laughs> Maybe that uh, just uh, a special one, but usually you can have all the color, all the woods and things like that. Then they're really fantastic basses. I love them. You know, that's the, for me, that's the best. You know. So thank you very much, and uh, uh, I'll uh, see you later. <laughs>